crazy I'm crazy for feeling so lonely I'm crazy crazy for feeling so Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, Ashley's going to be teaching you how to play crazy. Now, if you're the type of player that loves to strum and sing, this is going to be a really good challenge, because a lot of times when we're searching for songs to learn that are just strumming and singing, they tend to kind of sound similar to each other. In other words, they tend to be four chord songs that use all these stock chords that we learn on literally day one of playing ukulele, and they tend to use the same strum pattern throughout the entire tune. That can get a little bit, well, for lack of better words, boring after a while if every song has kind of the same setup. And that's where a tune like this really shines because you've got a song that has a really interesting harmony. In other words, it's got a really cool chord progression and it also tastefully blends finger picking and strumming. So you get to work on the best of both worlds with this arrangement. So with that in mind, I would go ahead and say that this is gonna be a great challenge for the intermediate and up player. Now, let's go ahead and take a step back and let's talk a little bit about this lesson. So in this video, Ashley's gonna be teaching you how to play the entire arrangement. But if you wanna get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's gonna be available at this link right here. Or you can go to the site, rockclass101.com and do a search for crazy. Now, also on that page will be the interactive on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. Before I hand it off to Ashley to teach you how to play this, I want to give you guys a couple lessons that are going to help you out with learning this arrangement. First off, this tune does have a few bar chords, so if you need a refresh on proper left hand form, check out this lesson, and I'll link it in the description box below as well. Plus, we actually have an additional lesson that covers just bar chords, so I'll link that one there too. Also, this song has a swung eighth note fill, so if you're new to the difference between playing with a straight fill versus a swung fill, jump into this lesson. Again, I'll link it in the description box below. I right, guess I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Ashley to teach you how to play, and then I'll catch you at the end of the video. Hey y'all, I'm Ashley Orlando, and today we're gonna to be learning the song Crazy. This was written by Willie Nelson and made famous by Patsy Cline. You're gonna notice that I wrote this arrangement for low G ukulele, 
And I'm also gonna be using a lot of swing in this. We're gonna swing the rhythm. So make sure that you know how to do that before you get started. Let's jump in. Measure one is possibly the trickiest measure in the whole arrangement. So let's get that over with and you'll have lots of time to practice it. The rhythm for this measure is one, two, triple it, triple it. Or you could say one, two, three, two, three, four, two, three. All right, so that is very important to remember, as is how we're going to play the down and up strums. So I'm going to play a Z chord for a minute, so not making any sound with the strings except for the percussive sound. And we're going to play down, 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 up, down, up, down, up. All right, let's do it again. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, up. So really, the main thing that you have to think about is just those two down strokes at the beginning. After that, it's down, up, down, up, down, up. It's very easy to get into that rhythm. All right, next, let's add the chords. We start off with an A chord. And notice I am playing this chord with my two middle fingers. The reason being, I have my index finger on standby so that as soon as I start moving up the fretboard, it comes into play. And now I've got the B flat shape you're probably familiar with seeing, all right? But for this particular song, we're going to call this an A sharp. <laughs> and then after A sharp, we're going to go to a B chord, we're going to play a C, and a C sharp. And notice that the A sharp all the way through the C sharp, those chords are in succession. So every time that we, we do another down or up stroke, once we start this progression up the fretboard, just keep going until you get to that C sharp on the fourth, fifth, and sixth frets. All together, measure one is going to sound like this. Let's play it a little bit slower. Three, four. One, two, triple it, triple it. Three, four. One, two, triple it, triple it. <laughs> awesome. Now measure two is gonna be quite simple compared to measure one. We are going to go up one more fret to a D chord. This is on frets 5, 6, and 7. Our rhythm is going to be 1, 2, 3, and 4. Remember, we're going to swing the rhythm here. So, so measures 1 and 2 all together sound like this. 3, 4. If you want, you can mute that a little bit with either your left hand or you can mute it with your right hand in a, a chuck fashion. For measure three, we're going to play a D major seven on frets seven, eight, and nine. And we're going to play that for two beats, one, two, and you might notice me sometimes I will play the first of these with my thumb and then the second. I'll play with my index finger to give it a little bit of variation. Either way is perfectly fine. So one, two, then we're going to move to a C sharp minor seven, which looks like an A minor seven shape, if you're familiar with that down here, but we're on frets six, seven, and eight. So that's on beats three and four. Let's try that together. Three, four. The rhythm for measure four is one, two, triple it four. And it's gonna sound like this. We're gonna play a B minor seven chord on frets four, five, and six for beats one, two. Then we're gonna to move to an E seven chord, but I'm gonna play it a little bit differently than normal. I'm not going to actually put down my middle finger just yet. Normally this would be our E seven chord but I'm gonna wait because I wanna hammer on my middle finger here, okay? So 
We're going to play this as a triplet. We've got triplet, and then we hammer on with a grace note. <laughs> so measure four sounds like this all together. One, two, triplet four. Let's try that together. Three, four. One, two, triplet four. So measures three and four together sound like this. Three, four. Three, four. Let's move on to the verse. For measure five, we're going to play another version of an A chord. So you've seen this one already, but we played it with our two middle fingers. Now we're going to go to the next inversion of an A chord, which looks a little bit like an F chord, right? If you're playing an F all the way down here, but we're on frets four, five, and six. And for this measure, we're going to play one, two, three, and four. So we've got mostly down strokes, except for the and of three. It's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, and four. And notice that I changed chords on beat four to a G chord, but I'm in the same shape, right? That F looking shape. So I'm on frets two, three, and four. So the rhythm is one, two, three, and four. Then for measure six, we go to an F sharp. We're going to move this shape down one more fret to frets one, two, and three. And now we're playing an F sharp for that same rhythm. One, two, three, and four. For measure seven and eight, we're going to see a picking pattern. And you'll see this a couple of times throughout the song, so we want to make sure that we get it solidly the first time. For these two measures, what you're going to do is you're going to basically play triplets over and over. So one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. That's measure seven, and it is the same rhythm for measure eight. I'm going to play slightly different chords, however. So first we've got a B minor. That's on one, two, three, two, two, three. Then for three, two, three, four, two, three, we change to a B minor major seven. All we need to do is walk down on the G string, okay? Measure eight, the first chord is a B minor seven, and we're gonna just bar the second fret for that one. So that is for the entire measure, actually. So that's gonna be one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. And to play this picking pattern, we're going to play most of the strings individually. Measure seven and eight are gonna sound like this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. So the picking pattern that we're going to play for these two measures is a little bit easier, I think, than it sounds. We're going to assign our thumb to both the G string and the C string, so it's going to alternate. And then our index finger goes on the E string, middle finger goes on the A string. For the first triplet, the first part of the first triplet, <laughs> we're going to pluck the G, E, and A strings all together but then we're gonna play single strings. Okay, so we have pluck, C string, E string, A string, E string, C string. Then on the first part of the third triplet, again, we pluck those three strings together and repeat C string, E string, A string, E string, C string. All right, so we've got the B minor, then the B minor major seven. For measure eight, 
We move to that B minor 7, but we keep the same picking pattern for the first half of the measure. So pluck the three strings, C string, E string, A string, E string, C string. And on the first part of the third triplet, we're going to go back to the A string. So we're going to change our pattern a little bit. Then we play the E string, then the C string, back to the A string again. We really like that string. Then the E string and the C string. Measure eight sounds like this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. Let's play measures seven and eight all together. Three, four. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. Let's play measures seven and eight, and I will not count anything. <laughs> three. Four. <laughs> Let's play measures five through eight all together. Three, four. Crazy. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. Alright, now we're going to move to measure 9. This is an E chord, so we need to change our finger position. We're on frets 2 and 4. And this time we're going to go back to down strokes. So we've got 1, 2, 3, and 4, and. This time we're actually going to play on the and of 4. Now you'll see occasionally throughout this song, sometimes we do play on the and of 4, sometimes we don't. If you do the opposite, it's not a problem at all. You can add your own flavor to the song that way. So for this measure, we're going to play that and of four. In measure 10, we play two more beats of the E chord. One, two, and then we move to a B sharp diminished seven. All we need to do is make what I like to consider a box finger shape. Two, three, two, three, and we're on frets two and three. And that's a single downstroke on beat three. And then we're going to move to the next inversion of this chord, which is up three frets. So one, two, three, frets five and six. And give that another downstrum. So measure 10 is one, two, three, four. Then for measure 11, we go back to the A chord on frets four, five, and six. One, two. On beat three, we move to an A sharp diminished seven. This is the box shape again, but we're on frets three and four. One, two. The rhythm in measure 12 is very similar, almost identical to the rhythm in measure four. We've got one, two, triple at four four, one, two, three, two, three, four. All right, and we're playing a B minor seven on the second fret. Then we go to an E augmented, which is going to be a little bit of an adaptation because we're technically going to hammer on with our index finger on the G string first fret. All right, so we've got a B minor seven for two beats. One, two, and then the hammer on, and the C string, and then the E string. And notice I like to hammer on and then move my thumb to the C string, but you could play this with your index and you could play the E string, open E string with your middle finger. It's up to you. So measure 12 sounds like this. One, two, three, two, three, four. Measures 11 and 12 sound like this. Three, four. Let's play measures 9 through 12. 
three, four. Crazy, crazy for feeling so blue. Excellent job. Let's play verse one all together. Three, four. Crazy. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. I'm crazy. Crazy for feeling so move on to verse 2 and the good thing about measures 13 through 16 is there that they are exactly the same as measures 5 through 8 that's the beginning of verse 1 so let's play that all together and I'll sing the words three four I knew you'd love me as long Measure 17 is the same as measure 9, so we're playing an E chord again. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and measure 18 is where verse 2 changes up a little bit. So we're going to play, instead of the E chord again, we're going to move to an E7 on the 4th and 5th frets as we saw before. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then for measure 19, we go back to our A chord. One, two, and on beat three, we change to a B minor seven. So we just need to make that A minor seven shape. Remember that? We're gonna change that to the fourth, fifth, and sixth frets. And we're gonna play that for beats three and four and. Three and four and. So measure 19 is one, two, three and four and then measure 20 we move to a b sharp diminished seven chord we've seen this already make that box shape on frets five and six and we're going to play one and two and then on the and of two we're changing to an a7 all right, what we're gonna do is we are going to move our fingers around and it looks like an F7 shape, if you're familiar with the F7 down here. But again, we're on frets five, six, and seven. So way up here, it's an A7. And that's gonna be on beat, let's see, one and two and three and, okay? That's what we're gonna hold the A7 for. And then on the fourth beat of the measure, we're just going to do a little pinky stretch up one extra fret. And it gives us a little bit of tension because we're, we're going up to the climax of the song, really. Our vocals are going to going up a little bit as well. So the ukulele is mimicking that in a way. So measure 20 is gonna sound like this rhythm-wise. One and two and three and four. All right, play it with me. Three, four. One and two and three and four. All right, let's play measures 17 through 20. Three, four. Someday. You'd leave me for somebody new <laughs> Let's try that again because that's a little bit trickier than some of the other passages From measure 17 Three, four Someday You'd leave me for some Yeah. 
Let's play verse two all together. Three, four. I knew you'd love me as long as you wanted. And then someday you'd leave me for somebody new. Right now we are at the chorus. This is measure 21, and we're going to move all the way to frets 9, 10, and 11. We're still going to use our F shape though. And depending on what size ukulele you have, it may get a little squishy up there. <laughs> okay, so we're going to play a D chord on beats 1, 2, 3, and 4. Same rhythm that we've seen through a lot of measures in this song. And we're going to continue that in measure 22, except it's a different version of the D chord. We're going to play the version that's back down here on frets 5, 6, and 7. Okay, so measures 21 and 22 are 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1, 2, for measure 23, we're going to go back to the A chord on frets 4, 5, and 6. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and... Then measure 24, we continue with that A shape. 1, and... But on beat 2, we're going to do a little bit of sliding. So we're going to slide down first. 2, and... And that's an A flat chord. For beats 3, and... We're going to go back to A, and then beats 4 and, we're going to move this way and play an A sharp. All right, so measure 23 and 24 all together sounds like this. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and. All right, let's play measures 21 through 24. Three, four. Worry, why should I let myself worry? And I bet you can guess where we're going in measure 25, right? <laughs> we're going to keep going up the fretboard. One more fret. So now we're on six, seven, and eight for a B chord. One, two, three, and four, and. All right, that's measure 25. Measure 26, we change things up a little bit. We need a B7. So we're going to move to frets four, five, and six. But this time we have a little triangle going on. And then our index finger is on the G string of the fourth fret. All right, so that's going to be one, two, three, and four, and. For measure 27, we're going to play an E chord, but it's a different shape than the one that we saw earlier. This time, we're going to just swivel our hand around to bar the fourth fret, and we're going to put our pinky down on the seventh fret. All right. And I'm using my pinky for a very specific reason, because I'm actually going to walk down on the A string with my other two fingers. So notice that they each have their own fret at the moment, right? So for measure 27, I'm going to play an E chord twice. One, two, then I walk down to E major seven, three, four. For measure 28, we play an E seven for two beats. And then beats three and four, I'm going to actually do the hammer-on technique again on the A string. And that's going to be a grace note. So it's going to sound like this. One, two, three. Let's play measures 25 through 28 all together. Three, four. 
Play the chorus all together. Three, four. Worry. Why should I let myself worry? We've made it to verse 3. Now, measures 29 through 32 are the same as measures 5 and 8. So the beginning of verse 1, the beginning of verse 2, this is the beginning of verse 3. They all match, so let's go ahead and play that together. 3, 4. Crazy for thinking that my love could hold you. We made it to the outro. First, in measure 33, we're going to play a D chord. And it looks a lot like the E chord that we just played, which was up here on frets 4 and 7. But this time, we need a D. So we move down two frets, same shape. And we're going to play 1, 2. Then we're gonna to change to a C sharp minor seven on beat three. And I like to use my ring finger for this because it is already in position. Remember, if we assign a fret to each of these fingers, I've already got this one pretty, pretty ready and it's decently strong. So I'm going to play that for beat three. Then we move down to a C minor seven, which is perfectly positioned for my middle finger. That's beat four. For measure 34, we move to a B minor seven. All we need to do is bar the second fret. One, two. For beat three, we play an A7 flat nine. All right, so we need to move our hand a little bit for this. I like to make the snake bite shape. So I am all on the first fret, zero, one, zero, one. And that's for one beat beat three and then we're going to play the next inversion up that's frets three and four so let's play measures 33 and 34 together just to give you a sense of rhythm for these two so we've got three four one two three four one two three four now for measure 35, we're gonna play our B minor seven again for two beats. One, two, and then we go to an E9, which is going to be on frets one and two, all right? One, two, two, two. Play that for two beats. In measure 36, we play an A chord the normal way. <laughs> Very simply with our first two fingers. One, two, then we move to an A7 on frets two, three, and four. One, two. So let's play measures 33 through 36. Three, four. Crazy for trying, and crazy for crying, and I'm crazy for loving you. Now we move to measures 37 and 38. And thankfully, because we're doing a bit of a tag here, we're gonna, we're gonna play the same chords. We've got our D chord again on frets two and five, but this time you're gonna hold it for two beats instead of playing it for two beats. One, two, then we go to our C sharp minor seven on the fourth fret, our C minor seven on the third fret, so those are beats three and four. For measure 38, the B minor seven, 
Again, we're going to hold it this time for two beats. One, two, then our A7 flat nine, three, and switch to the other inversion for B4. Now for measure 39, we go back to our B minor seven, hold it for two beats. One, two, and our E9 again for two beats. Three, four. For measure 40, we've got a triplet rhythm again. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four. <laughs> so we only play three triplets and then we have a full beat on beat four. We're gonna play our A chord and thankfully we can play it the easy way. It's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four. Plucking these same three strings that we have been plucking all together throughout the song. We're gonna do G string, E string, and A string all at once. Then we go to the C string, E string, A string, E string again, C string. And then on the third triplet, we're going to actually put our ring finger down on the second fret of the A string. All right. Then we go back to the E string, back to the C string, and one more time on the A string, still with our ring finger. So once again, measure 40 sounds like this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four. Then for measure 41, all we're gonna do is we're going to play a whole note, but we're gonna add a grace note on top. The note that we wanna to get to eventually is this C sharp note on the A string, right? But we're going to add a grace note to slide into it. So we just came from this position, and I like to continue with the slide with my ring finger. So I just move it up one fret, and then one more fret to get that C sharp, all right? So for measure 40 into 41, it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, one. Let's play measures 39 through 41 all together. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, one. <laughs> Let's play measures 37 through 41 all together. Three, four. Crazy for trying and crazy for crying and I'm crazy for loving you. <laughs> Let's play verse three all the way to the end. Three, four. Crazy. For thinking that my love could hold you I'm crazy for trying And crazy for crying And I'm crazy for loving you I'm crazy Excellent job. I hope y'all enjoyed this arrangement of crazy and I look forward to seeing you in another lesson. Bye. Hi right, guys. So this week's ukulele lesson is a ton of fun. This has always been one of my favorite country tunes because it's got a really interesting harmony and obviously a gorgeous melody on top of it. But her arrangement was just tastefully done and it's just a really good challenge for the intermediate level. It's got a nice blend of strumming, finger picking, and you get some really cool chord voicings. Plus, you don't have one strum pattern throughout this entire tune. So it makes it a really good challenge for that intermediate level. Now, I do want to give you a friendly reminder that if you want to get the tabs to print off and keep for your records, that was available 
at this link right here, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for crazy. Now, also on that page was the interactive on-screen tab viewer. So you can literally hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down at any speed, all that fun jazz that makes learning this song that much easier. All right, guys, so again, I hope you enjoyed this and we'll catch you in the next lesson. Take care.